Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. That sure is true. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. Bestsellers, new releases, celebrity memoirs like the Britney Spears book that just came out, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and so much more. I personally just listened to Heather Gay's Bad Mormon, um, kind of for Real Housewives of Salt Lake City research, but also just for fun to listen to it because it was a good book. And it's great. I mean, it's her actually reading it. And it is so nice to run around and do my errands and be able to listen to a book. Because let's face it, I will crash my car if I try to read it physically. It's a great use of Audible. So try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappins or text crappins to 500-500. This episode is brought to you in part by Purina. The holidays are here. It's such a fun and festive time and also a great opportunity to reflect on all the things we're thankful for. And if you're like most people, your pet is somewhere at the top of your list. Purina is dedicated to creating richer lives for pets and the people who love them. From helping older pets think like their younger selves to making cat ownership a possibility for more people than ever. Purina is helping pets live longer, healthier, happier lives. Your pet gives you so much the whole year round. So this holiday season, treat your pet with Purina treats. Best in class nutrition, unsurpassed taste. From dogs to cats, Purina has you covered for all your treat needs. Your pet is Purina's passion. Head to amazon.com backslash Purina to learn more. And here's your prescription. I know just the pharmacy to get this filled. Who are you? A pharmacy benefit manager. A middleman your insurer uses to decide which medicines you can get, what you pay, and sometimes even which pharmacy you should go to. Why can't I go to a pharmacy in my neighborhood? Because I make more money when you go to a pharmacy I own. <laughs> no one should stand between you and your medicine. Visit phrma.org slash middleman to learn more. Paid for by Pharma. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to What's What Crappens, the podcast for all that crappy love to talk about on Neil Bravs. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hi, Ben. Hi, how are you? You know what? Great, honestly. Good. Because it's just like return to old school, Real Housewives of New York, which has been a long time for us. It's the beginning of Real Housewives of New York Legacy, starring Ronnie and Ben. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for being here. Welcome back, Legacy. And welcome back to people who only listen to that show. Don't know what the hell you're thinking, but (laughs) welcome back to you. We've missed you. Um, Ben, what are you cooking today? What are you making? What's cooking? What am I cooking? Yeah. Well, wouldn't you like to know? Because I'm sorry, you (laughs) haven't been in my kitchen for eight years. Uh, Bagels don't hang out with... Bagels don't hang out with uh, Wonder Bread. How about that? So you better get the crumbs (laughs) of your Wonder Bread, and you better put peanut butter on them, and you better back the fuck up with your peanut butter. You got it, Bread? Uh, I was... um, What's cooking is a whole vat of enthusiasm because I was really happy with this first episode. But of course, we knew it was going to be good because this is a time-tested group the Luann, Dorinda, Ramona, and Sonia, the four of them, they have really like an uncanny ability to generate a huge amount of entertainment despite like you can have a Kelly, you can have a Kristen, you plug and play other people, you're always going to get some good stuff out of it. And um, it was great. It was great seeing the show. It's just hilarious. It, this is such a natural rapport. It is there. They... I was very, very delighted by this first episode, especially because, honestly, I didn't really like The Last Girl's Trip. I felt like the chemistry was very off in The Last Girl's Trip, and it didn't really do much for me. But this one felt really, really good. What did you think? Well, one of the things in The Last Girl's Trip that kind of hurt the last Roni legacy uh, was Leah. 
So it's that it's not weird. Uh, so this one is without Leah and um, a lot funnier. It was very much a things that don't change uh, episode. It feels like it's been 10 years since that show's been on. It has not. It has been yeah. a year and a half or something. It hasn't really They're, been that I, long. I know. They really but are waxing like a all long poetic time. like, wow, we're back together. Yeah, but it's it's not been that long. Yeah. Especially for them because they shot this a long time ago. But it is not that long. It does seem like, wow, people really never change. I mean, Ramona does the old Bravo. It's, you know what? It's me part two. This is a very different first and beat that you're going to get today, okay? Yeah, I'm a different I'm a good person now. And Dorinda comes back. You would think that Dorinda would come back like, you know what? I'm going to be less of a wasted idiot because I just get so much criticism and I got put on pause or whatever. Nope. She, nobody's learned a goddamn thing. And um, it's kind of refreshing. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I think it's been really, really good. And like for a moment, I was... Um, I was convinced that Kelly, Kelly seems much more lucid. And so for a moment, I thought like, wow, she really has grown and she's like pretty chill and like normal these days, but she still is kind of, um, a, I'm up here, you're down here kind of lady. Like she still has that. And then you have Kristen who I've always felt like Kristen was a better housewife than people gave her credit for. And I think I still believe that like she still has, she, her whole thing is she's kind of like a brat, but like she steps into this show and she just has no problem just going right up against Dorinda. And I actually have to kind of admire that. There's like a fearlessness. She has, she just goes and Dorinda scowls at her and Kristen's like, okay, I'm going to tangle with you. You know, that's like, I just, I don't know. I think it's so far that the episode's been really great. Well, Kristen has never really been afraid. I mean, Kristen went up against Be uh, Bethany Frankel. Uh, Kristen is always Ramona. very good for like a, ah, ah, how could you? Why are you talking to me like this? Like, she's always <laughs> been kind of good for that. I think especially eight years of just <laughs> yeah. having, you know, Josh and her kids to talk to and see, still watching Housewives and all that stuff, obviously. You know, I'm sure she's filled with a lot of, well, I would have, and now you get the chance. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to take anybody's crap today. Um, and she still just looks like it's still kind of sad every single time. You're like, this girl is just never going to win. Like, there's no winning. She's, she she you can't do it, Kristen. You were not born to win this game, okay? So just en enjoy getting tossed around in the wind. She also... She also has the Leah thing, which is that um, I think there's something about these women that causes her to regress towards like a teenager a little bit. So she gets a little impetulant. Um, and I'm sure she has an ax to grind because I think we all kind of felt like Bethany iced her off of the show. When Bethany came back, I think Kristen had two seasons maybe. And when her first season was like, was fine. And then when Bethany came back, like, she just like would not interact with Kristen. It just felt like she was really icing her out. She really didn't like this, this like hot younger woman. And um, <laughs> like Kristen, I just, I have a memory of Kristen trying to like actually have conversations or scenes and her just like not being invited to things or not being welcome in a sense. And don't you remember it was, like, when very she was clear like, Bethany, to me that Bethany, I feel like you're putting me in a box, Bethany. It's like, yeah, I mean, I know you're putting me what? What, what is this box? What are you, what are you talking about? Why, why are you here right now? What, oh, I don't understand. You're in a box? Like, what is this? This girl's in a box. Someone get her out of a box. Like, what? What are you, what are you talking about? Put it back in the box. Take it back. I don't even know what you're talking about. No. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. She yeah, pretended I mean, she, she didn't know what she... putting me in a box meant. <laughs> yeah. And then I think she kind of was like, her whole vibe was like, this girl, she's like complaints, like whatever. So um, I think that Kristen is coming in also to kind of be like i have some stuff i want to say or i you know i have feelings about things but i don't know either well, way another super I'm interesting thing about easy. Kristen casting is that Kristen was cast in the first reboot of new york because new york has always been the boldest one about rebooting they fired everybody except for luann and ramona right as friends of but then they brought in all the new people heather Kristen, aviva 
uh, Carol. They brought in the whole new cast, but then just had the other like Lu wait, was it Luann as a I friend? Think it was it was Ramona and so I think Ramona and Sonia were the only ones brought back, and Luann was demoted to friend of in season oh, five. Okay, she was brought back as a friend of, but they mostly had this new cast. So that was the first time they axed the whole show. And I remember back then because we covered all those episodes, and I remember back then thinking, oh my god, I remember saying like this is just bullshit i can't believe they would do this it sucks and then that turned out to be some of the most classic episodes ever i mean the the new cast ended up like once they got warmed up and everything they did a great job i thought and so now here we are another reboot and here's Kristen. you know they bring back chris yeah yeah all this stuff all this the pirate stuff the Aviva, you know, it's like you're both white trash, quite frankly, you know, calm down. That was all from the reboot season, which I also remember that season starting off a little shaky and then it like found its way and became really good. But yeah, I think Kristen came in the season after the reboot and then she was there. The, she was there the season after and then she was, she was, I think she had two seasons. I don't think she had three seasons. I think she just had two seasons and then they brought Bethany in on her second season and they may have brought Dorinda in too. And the set, I don't know, doesn't matter, but, um, either way, the point is just, you know, it's hard. You can't, you cannot like to get chemistry like this with cast members is a special thing. Um, even if some of the people are terrible, terrible people. <laughs> so, uh, shall we dive in? Yes. Uh, let's get into it. So uh, one thing that also returned, which I love, is the old school Real Housewives of New York music. <laughs> the synthesizer ripoff of Sex and the City music. I love yeah. this music. I'm just so glad to hear this Casio keyboard back in my life so good i love it the sort of like the vibraphone sound like the synthesizer vibraphone um so luann's putting on some pearls and she's like did i hear the door and in walks sonia and they're saying hi and everything and she's like oh you look so cute and pink sonia rita and she's like oh yeah well i always dress for the girls and i undress for the guys ha <laughs> so uh you're right about that <sighs> i'm so sorry um, I'm looking up Kristen Takeman because I want to see this casting. Because you're like, it doesn't really matter. And I'm like, it does matter. It does matter. When was she here? What season did she come in on? You have such a better memory than me. She came in on season six. You're right. I thought she came in with all the other ladies. That's crazy. No. And you're also right that she only Viva, had. Heather and Carol. Yeah, you're right that she only had a couple seasons, too. That's nuts. I thought she had like was it just two three. seasons, right? Yeah, it was. She had three. What? Okay, she did have. Th no, no, she no. Had three seasons. She had six and seven. No, oh, is this right? Right. And did Dorinda come in on seven, or did Dorinda come in on six honestly. with her? Um, did Dorinda come I need like a ruler to hold this up because it's like one of those Wikipedia charts, and I'm. <laughs> yeah. I can't follow I know, the I'm, gonna, lines. I'm, I'm coming. I'm joining. I'm coming. I'm giving. Join. I'm giving Dorinda shit for for drinking too much. I cannot follow the lines on a wiki wiki chart. Yeah, she was in season six no. and seven. I'm literally holding up my phone to be my ruler. You guys, this is sad. And Dorinda came in on season <laughs> seven, which is the same season that Bethany came back. So I think yeah, yeah. it was too much. Like I think that Kristen Takeman between. That was a that was a large cast. That was a large cast, and between Dorinda and Bethany coming back, although Aviva had left that season, but yeah, too much, too much for her to handle. Well, she left after she Kristen's shuffle. first season, right? That's what this says, right? Oh, Aviva gosh. did, and yeah, so okay, so yeah. yes, so these two who we just watched in um, their spinoff show, Crappy Islander. Crappy, crappy lake, crappy welcome lake. to Crappy Lake, are back doing their whole shtick, you know? They're like, oh my God, I hope you get some dick in St. Barth. God, I hope there's some good looking guys there. She's like, yeah, there's always some of the fucking St. Barth. <laughs> we need hot guys, as Ramona would say. What'd she say? I need hot guys. I need hot guys. And then it cuts to Ramona packing. She's like, whoa, where's my phone? There it is. Oh my God. Let me make a call, okay? I'm gonna call Dorinda. So she calls Dorinda. Dorinda <laughs> re familiarizing herself with the art of beginning a scene. Whoa, look at me packing my suitcase. You know what? I need to find my phone because I want to make a call on it, okay? 
<laughs> I'm going to use my finger to press numbers because I'm going to call. What you do is you make a phone call, okay? So she calls up Dorinda. who's like, hey, girl. Oh, my God. You look so pretty. And she's like, yeah, well, you know what? I'm packing because I'm going on a trip, a trip with you. Because guess what? I'm, I'm on the phone with you because I'm calling you and I'm going on a trip, okay? She's like, well, you know what? My favorite place is St. Bart's, okay? Look, what could possibly go wrong at St. Bart's? Now they're going to cut to a cue of me yelling, take it Xanax, okay? Ramona, you don't have to tell us that part. You know what? What if you forget? Just sing, sit. <laughs> She's a very literal scene setter upper. So, of course, we see, we see Aviva, a flashback, Aviva saying, my husband just did an amazing thing. Take a Xanax. Take a Xanax. Calm down. So, Ramona's like, yeah, you know what? It's going to be me. It's going to be you. It's going to be Sonia. You know what? Kelly's always smiling. And then there's that girl, Caitlin. Okay, that's not a name. Not Caitlin. I don't know a name. You know what? Katie. Rebecca? Caroline? Rebecca? <laughs> you know what? Marissa? Yeah. Be 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 it's a bet. Florence. Florence. <laughs> no, her name is Stephanie. Cantaloupe. Stephanie, I know that for sure. Cantaloupe. Stephanie. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. <laughs> Doorway. Doorway is going to come join us, okay? Saltillo, Saltillo Tile. That's it. That's the name. <laughs> Armadillo. Armadillo. You know what? The person who's joining us is Settlers of Catan, okay? Uh, you don't even remember, Kristen. You don't remember. She's, you know what? I do remember Kristen. Don't say that, okay? Do you know, I think she grew up a lot. She's like, yeah, you didn't remember her. And then we see a clip, uh, a headline from Reality T saying, Ramona Singer genuinely forgot who Kristen Takeman was before New York Legacy cast announcement. She's like, you know what, Dorinda? Don't start, okay? Because I absolutely remembered her, so change the subject right now, Dorinda. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to take this right now. You know what? I totally remember her. She was like... <laughs> Blonde brunette, like five foot, six foot, somewhere like that. She had two arms, two legs, two eyes, one nose, and one mouth. Okay? Mm. Okay, I was just joking. Good boy, Dorinda! And she just hangs up on her. So then we go back to Sonia and Lou, and they're talking about Kristen coming. And then we go to Kristen and Josh, who have moved to L.A. Josh. Calabasas. Wow. Josh has... um I don't know how to really describe Josh. I would say from the hairline up, he looks like a Ken doll. And then from there on down, he's kind of like Milton Burl in a funhouse mirror. What do you think? <laughs> I think he looks like uh, the sort of person whose shit was put out there uh, by Ashley Madison, and he narrowly, narrowly avoided being part of a much larger scandal. And now he's appearing on TV for the first time since then and is just trying very carefully <laughs> to modulate himself and make sure the audience has forgotten all of that. That's, he yeah. sort of has this fear in his eyes. Like, I'm just going to be really supportive. And we can also forget my fedora phase on this show. We should do that too. <laughs> the fedora he did phase. have a terrible fedora phase yeah yeah he is doing a, a like ha ha hello Kristen. i'm such a nice husband wow so i'm so supportive of whatever you would like to do hon and um uh, i just my note he goes she says do you like this josh and he goes is that a skirt <sighs> you see you can try to pretend you're nice all you want to but really, you don't know what a skirt is, Josh? You're just talking about a <laughs> fucking gaslighter. My God, what is that, a skirt? Oh, no, Josh, it's an what elephant. What the odds? The fuck do you think it is, Josh? She goes, what are the odds of me going to St. Bart's with all these women after we were just there? I mean, can you imagine? It's literally been almost eight years. Can you believe that? And he's like, yeah, I can't wait. And they're not going to ask about Ashley Madison, are they? Like, I'm really excited for you, but they're not going to ask, right? Right. And right. Kristen is telling us, I mean, people are going to feel like, who's this Kristen girl? <laughs> it's been so long. I barely remember anything that's happened, which we find out later is a complete lie. She remembers every single second, and she <laughs> has studied up every line that's ever been uttered on all of these shows. Yeah. She's like, I'm a completely different person. You know, I used to be... um. 
a, 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 a blonde lady who looked like she's from a J. Crew catalog, and now I'm just a blonde lady who looks like she's from a J. Crew catalog. <laughs> Listen, we moved out of Manhattan to the suburbs, but the suburbs happened to be the suburbs of Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, it was either that or the West Side, and I was like, no way, we're going to move to just a different insufferable neighborhood instead. <laughs> We found the only pocket of Los Angeles that thankfully doesn't have the internet. So I've kept my husband. <laughs> it's going really well. <laughs> so Kristen, her kids are now teenagers, which is weird. Like the the daughter is 11 and the son is 15. And he also has um, Gen Z hair, which is like bleach blonde hair with black stars in it, which is like great. I like I personally would never choose to have my hair look kind of like a soccer ball because I don't like errant feet coming towards it. But I support this kid and his artistic expression. Speaking of black stars, here she is. Happy birthday to you. Under <laughs> Diana okay. Ross wig. Yes, yes. Please, I, no I got the reference. Please, no so Kristen, he's so so Kristen's asking her son, like, what's going to happen when your hair is gone? And he's saying, it, like, he's going to have black spots and everything. And she just tells us, oh, this is actually really annoying. She goes, yeah, since you've seen me last, I've pretty much just been a mom. I call it momming really hard. <laughs> not that there's Wait, a very famous not- podcast slash YouTube show called Mom So Hard, which is fantastic. Go check it out. Love you, Jen Smedley. Hope you're great. Um, so, um, Sonia and Luann, Sonia's like, oh my God, I bump into some of those people on social. I saw Kelly there on social media, on the internet. And Luann's like, oh gosh, well, I wasn't on Scary Island, so I don't remember any of that stuff because I wasn't there. So what's there to remember? Am I right, girls? (laughs) And so we see all the great flashbacks of Scary Island. We see all the clips. We all know them, all the clips. By the way, the half this show is clips. This is sort of like a clip show. So Sonia's like, well, you know, let's just like make her feel comfortable so she won't go off the deep end. And, you know, I'm like, well, in case you didn't remember last time, she was pretty comfortable and still went off the deep end. So good luck. Good luck with that. You know, it's just like some of these people, they're like Kelly. They just can't let go of the past. You know what I mean? You can say one thing to them and they'll never forget them. Oh, my God. I miss being Mrs. Citibank. Please. Please. <laughs> well, you know, Kelly and I are friends. I mean, we were never close friends, but she's the sweetest, nicest woman. And, you know, but she's more of a boy's kind of girl. Uh, kind of one of those non-cabaret listening, rejecting my autograph kind of girl. <laughs> I'm trying to say it, she's a total bitch. So then Kelly is with her daughter, who's, all, well, one of her daughters, who's all grown up and freaking gorgeous um and she's like um when i was on the og new york back in the ice age <laughs> that was like totally different and, like i was just like a single mom and now i'm like i have like this booming real estate career my kids are all grown up my real estate career is a boom have you seen it it's booming it's huge it's it's giant <laughs> have you seen i mean we've all seen it I'm, I'm talking to the new york audience but my god these this real estate career Kelly is the only person still to this day I've ever seen put herself in all of the ads of the home she's selling. She'll be like, here's the living room. And she's like posing in the living room, like with like a leg in the air, like a carefree. (laughs) Kelly, I mean, look, this is the lady who went jogging down Fifth Avenue in the middle or Park Avenue or one of the big avenues in like the middle lane with a taxi behind her. So she's not afraid to insert herself in places that are not uh, traditional spaces for humans. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code CRAFENS. New customers can get a deposit match up to $500 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code CRAFENS. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 
Please play responsibly. 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opted in new customer. Min $5 deposit. Max match 500 in casino credits, which require one time playthrough within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. It's almost that magical time of year. Speaking of, what's your favorite Christmas story, Ben? Uh, hands down, The Grinch. Same! It cracks me up that he hates all the merriment. Right, and he steals everyone's presents. But then it's like so heartwarming at the end when like the whole town is still singing and he realizes that there's more to Christmas than just gifts. Oh, I know. It hits me right in the feels. Best part is, Wondery has a new podcast starring The Grinch. And I think there's someone who wants to tell you more about it, Ronnie. Hi, it's me, the Grand Poobah of Bah Humbug. The OG Green Grump, The Grinch. From Wondery, Tis the Grinch Holiday Talk Show is a pathetic attempt by the people of Whoville to use my situation as a teachable moment. So join me, the Grinch. Listen as I launch a campaign against Christmas cheer, grilling celebrity guests like chestnuts on an open fire. Your family will love the show. As you know, I'm famously great with kids. Follow Tis the Grinch Holiday Talk Show on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. So um, Kelly is like, what if this is like Scary Island 2.0? I mean, you know, although I've seen a lot of the women, you know, over the years, like I haven't spent quality time with them. And, you know, like I just don't, you never know with them, you know? So she's like, God, I love Kelly being the one who's scared of of a repeat of Scary Island. You were the scary one. Okay. It's (laughs) like Michael being like, "Uh oh, guys, here we go again. Are you? I hope this isn't scary. It's like this is Halloween. You... Wait, Michael's Halloween, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Michael Darby, and I was like, I'm I'm listening. <laughs> oh my god, I just gripped someone. I hope I don't grip another person. Yeah, you're well, to be you fair, are the groper, sir. Kelly does not have Bethany Frankel on this trip, and Bethany did trigger Kelly by delivering her a bag of skinny girl swag remember because kelly called her yes. friend and was like this is just like weird it's just like weird like she brought like a bag of like of like her stuff it's just like it's like weird right now she's like stalking me it's like so weird to be like stalked like that like i've never had clip art delivered to my door on canvas like that i mean it was just it was like terrifying by the way later it just occurred to me later on the the what Kelly says about Kristen's calling Kristen a fan. That is so reminiscent of the scary Island fight where Kelly was insisting that Bethany was merely a cook, not a chef. It is literally like, that is so Kelly's thing. (laughs) So good. So they're all arriving at the airport. Ramona is just being Ramona on her selfie cam. Like, Whoa, you know what? Look at me. I'm going on a trip. (laughs) Very excited. I'd like to dedicate this to Donald Trump Jr. You know what? Because why not? Love you. Call me. Ramona does like a little song and then does tries to do the TikTok transition thing. She goes, I'm here. I'm ready. So go get ready. And then she puts her hand on like the lens to do like, she's so used to doing the stupid thing where you put the hand on the lens. And then when you take the hand off, you're in a different location, which again, it still cracks me up. That for as far as we have come with video and video technology and personal video technology, that people still revert to the same shit that they did in the 80s when they got a camcorder, which is like, I'm going to press the pause button and I'm going to step out of frame and I'm going to hit the pause button again. Oh my God, I disappeared on the video. Well, it's TikTok band. It's called art. Okay. So so um sonia's like uh telling her camera she's tell she's on the plane so she's telling her phone camera or whatever she's like wow here i am you know this is really great because i've just been empty nesting <sighs> sonia you're <laughs> i don't think she it's called empty watching nesting at reruns this point. of empty nests <laughs> she's just been watching that Diana man off and christy mcnichol great chemistry not so sure about richard mulligan but if you were alive i definitely would have fucked him by now <laughs> So um, she talks. There's so also they the get shot. on this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you didn't actually finish what you were trying to say about. Something. I was just continuing <laughs> the notes. It was nothing. It was nothing groundbreaking. Well, Dur- Wait, we also have to acknowledge the shot of Dorinda sitting on her luggage, swirling around at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> she- 
<laughs> yeah, Dorinda is doing that thing where she's like, look at me. D- everyone forgets I'm just happy go lucky Dorinda. Nothing bothers me. Look at me. I'm just rolling around in a suitcase having a good time. This is so fun <laughs> to see all these girls again. You know what? This. Time is going to be left and right for him. You want to dig in my goddamn ear? I'll tell you it's about to land. You, on your fucking face. So if someone needs to sit down, it better be you playing. It better be fucking you. All right? Uh, so, um, by the way, you know what I love about a good old-fashioned Dorinda rant is that the uh, laptop literally froze up and <laughs> there was time for it to be to freeze, to be frozen, to unfreeze and catch up with the buffering. And the Dorinda rant was still going on, which is not a comment about you. It's a comment about like, that's because a proper Dorinda rant takes that long, you know? <laughs> so um, Kelly, so they're changing planes and everything. They they have to get on this sh- this terrifying little plane and they're just like screaming as they, as they descend down onto St. Bart's. Also, by the way, very disappointed that we did not get a resurrection of Housewives on the Island, baby, for the theme song. Like, this was a Housewives on the, on the Island occasion. Why do we know they have a different theme song for every single one? Don't you remember the one at Dorinda's was like the succession? Mu- it was like a mix between the succession I, music and then the um, only murders in the building music. And I know, then, but why couldn't they have just done like a remix, like a Housewives on the Island, baby, or something like that? You know, like Legacy like, on oh. the Island, baby. Um, actually, I want to play this one because I thought it was kind of a bop. It's not really. I think they were like, take the uh, kind of Sex in the City synthesizer music, but make it kind of more of a bop. Here it is, everybody. Uh oh. Wait. Oh, I'm recording. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I have become that my own father. Okay, here we go. You become Ramona. <laughs> It's a little haunted housey. You have to wait till the end. Okay, repeat. Hold on. I like that. It's like, the ending has like this detective show from the 80s like it has a lot of feelings going on that sort of sounded like an upbeat haunted house it sort of sounds like detective show it sort of sounds like just like a video game like a like a modern video game where you're like I don't know, like skiing or something. Just, I loved it, I'm into it it's housewives on the island, baby. Housewives on. I guess it doesn't work. I just feel like Housewives on the Island was so good, and I feel like it's being forgotten to Bravo history. And like, I think that is like one of the best theme songs that Bravo has given us. I put it up there with the Salt Lake City theme song. I put it up there with the. Um, I love actually the Roni theme song, like pre reboot. And this is not an anti reboot thing. I just really like the theme song, like from. The, the latest version of it before the new cast. Love that theme song. I don't know. Just, I just don't want it to be forgotten. Housewives on the Island, baby. <sighs> Housewives on the Island, baby. Let's get the party started. Um, okay, so airport arrivals. They're on the plane. Um, Sonia's like, you know, I just would rather go on the ferry. That's what I do. You get a cocktail. You sit down. I don't want to be a downer, but I know people who have lost their lives on that plane. John, John, Madonna, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Grimace, Aretha Franklin, <laughs> Diana Manoff, um, Mulligan. Sorry, just really been, really been empty nesting. Yeah, Dreyfus the really... dog, bless his heart. Dreyfus, why did I say Mulligan? To Richard, because Richard Mulligan okay. is the yeah. is. Like I said, I would have fucked him. So, I loved his work on so. If I could call a Mulligan on so, anything, it would be not fucking. Richard Mulligan when I had the chance. <laughs> so Dorinda's like, Is, was that a landing or did they just drop from, did we just drop from the sky? And the man's like, well, my, la- my life flashed in front of me. Oh, wait, sorry. That's just the montage I show at all my shows. Never mind. <laughs> God, that was a fun life flash. Incredibly 
tasteful life flash, I have to say for myself. You know what? <laughs> I don't know what everybody's been talking about, okay? Because landing didn't bother me at all. That's it. I'm Ramona 2.0. <laughs> Very non plustered about things, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Luann, now that they have arrived at St. Bart's, Lu at a French-speaking island, Luann is now in full French mode. So she's like, merci beaucoup. Merci, je suis très contente. Merci, merci, I do speak French en encore. Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> So um, the drivers come. They're like, hi, we're going to drive you to your location. And Ramona's like, whoa, you're here for us? Please unpack my bag into the back seat and then repack it before we get to the thing, just because I said so, okay? Did I say that in a nice, uh, nice enough way, bus boy? <laughs> Thank you, all you servants, for bringing us to the house, okay? So they're driving, and Dorinda's asking Kelly if she's dating anyone, and Kelly says it's complicated, and Dorinda's like, you know, Kelly and I have known each other for a long time because, you know, we'd end up going to the same cocktail parties, and then I would sort of just, like, yell at her and say, you better back it up, but then we became friends, and, like, we never got, like, super close, but, like, I've been told things about Kelly, you know, like, go to sleep, stuff like that, but, like, I've watched Scary Island. I just want to take her by face value. And so then we keep Luann, I think, um, thinks she's on an 80s sitcom <laughs> reboot. Every time they cut to Luann, she's like, girls, can you believe it? Here we are together on a vacation again. It's us. The gang reunited. Am I right, girls? And now they get to the place. She's like, girls, can you believe it? This is the mansion. This is the same mansion we stayed at before. Oh, the good times. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. <laughs> All right. Show the clips of the good times. Go, girls. Standing tall on the wings <laughs> of the dreams, rise and fall. Line. <laughs> Perfect strangers, everyone. Perfect strangers. Thank you so much. You know who's not strangers? Us. Because we're old friends. Every single one of us, except that blonde girl over there, who I still support. <laughs> you know, I did once fuck Balky Bartokamus. It was great. He wore his outfit from the old country, and we did the Dance of Joy afterwards. So then we get the house manager, Martin, who is adorable. And he's like, oh, my God, it's so good to see you. And he, like, scratches his face and closes his eyes really tight. I was like, oh, my God, he's adorable and not going to take one ounce of shit. I love his little, like, look at no. me, just innocent little flush baby. I'm so excited to see you. Oh, uh... Vous, vous êtes français? Oh, vous, par, vous parlez français? Oh, la bagage, uh, c'est, c'est là, oui, n'est-ce pas? So, um, and by ben, the way, c'est bien, là, she is silly girl. Yeah, it is. <laughs> by the way, uh, someone's, Luann's like, well, I'm certainly having flashbacks of Johnny Depp right now. Ha ha ha. Anyone want to ask me about it? Anyone? Anyone at all? Well, I'd like to know the story. Oh, well, you can't hear it now. I'm gonna tell it at dinner. That's what you call a tease in the business. <laughs> I love Luann promoting her story, her dinner time story. <laughs> yeah, she's like, here's a poster for my story that I'm gonna tell at dinner. <laughs> Posing in front of it. Can I, take a can I take a photo in front of my story? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One night only, dinner tonight. Luann tells oh. the story. So then we meet Jean Baptiste, the chef, and he's like, Oh, hello, funny faced lady. I know you from years ago, yes. And Ron is like, Whoa, you know what? No, not really. Oh my God, are you Kristen? I will never forget who I was. <laughs> Hi. It's, it's like, No, I'm right so here. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so Ramona's like, whoa, oh my God, it is you. Let's hug. I just want to show the world that I'm willing to hug servants, okay? So Luann's like, don't touch the staff, Ramona. <laughs> well, sorry, okay? Just got excited, okay? Sorry. Sorry. No. What? This is the Ramona that's not problematic at all, okay? I don't do problem things. Now, unpack my suitcases with your underwear on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> So you guys, did this bring back memories this house? You got a lot of memories? And Sonia's like, yeah, I mean, we used to have spats right here. I mean, Ramona and I would just pull the spigot and Rosé would come out all day. Although I did get a lot of gum damage when I tried to fillet it. That was awkward. And then we see a clip of Ramona going, hey, Tony, can you splurt us? Just spurt us, would you? Like, see, you know what? In that memory, it wasn't problematic at all. I'm just saying, okay? You know, what's problematic? Is it? 
me or is it the year? You tell me. You know what? You know what? I have no problem hugging the chef because guess what? I don't see color, okay? It's like, well, he's white also. But you know what? I, have to, I don't know. Am I hugging a white person, a black person? I'm progressive, okay? So then Sonia's like, Sonia's like, oh yeah, and this over here is where Aviva called us white trash. And we see a flashback of Aviva saying, you're both white trash, quite frankly. And then the next day, Ramona having looking up the, the, the definition on like Urban Dictionary. <laughs> You know what? The term is usually a slur. White trash versus cracker, hillbilly, oaky, and redneck. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I've fucked all of those people. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Kelly's like, oh my God, the staff is so nice. And Luann says, yeah, they're not bad to look at either. I need a chef boyfriend. Polyvoo Francais penis liquor. Voulez vous goucher avec moi, sir? Line. Line. Swap. All right. All right, everybody, gather around. I like to pick rooms. We're going to pick a number out of a bag, and then we're going to roll the dice. Then we're going to pick a card, do a somersault, jump rope to decide who gets what room. Everybody follow? All right, everybody, let's do it. Everybody's if we got to keep it fair, because there's something about Ramona I always want in the big room. <laughs> okay? All right. All right. So uh, also a new rule. Uh, the longer it takes, you, I, I will continue singing until you're done rolling your dice. Okay, here we go. Happy birthday. You. They're like, roll the dice, roll the dice. Well, that's uh, the fastest dice rolling I've ever seen in my life. That's crazy. <laughs> so Ramona comes in last, which I don't know how you would rig dice throwing, but I feel like the producers did anyway. I don't think it's possible, yes. but I think they did it <laughs> because they're just going to try and trigger Ramona all they can. So she's like, whoa, you know what? I got last choice for a room and that's fine with me because I'm from, you know what? I hope the room number on the outside is 2.0 because that's the Ramona you're getting. That's it. <laughs> You know what? They're all terrific rooms. They all come with their own servants, and I'll be very happy. Though I'm sure they all have closets that are the proper height for my dresses, so like not an issue, okay? Hmm. So, and so she's uh, like, you she's know actually, what? Like we we all have enough rooms, right? And Martin Martin's like, uh, no, you have to share a room. Two of you have to share. And she's like, whoa, 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 wait. You know what? This is a game changer, then. Okay, it's not fair. We should also have our own room. This is ridiculous. Okay, Ramona two point oh just became Ramona one point two nine. I don't really understand numbers. But it's just not the same because this Ramona doesn't have her own room. It's it. May I now present everyone with Ramona Singer. And so now Ramona's like really mad that she has to share. And she's like, I mean, what are we going to do? Someone has to share. Okay, so now what happens? Okay, this is crazy. I'm sorry. This is crazy. All right. It's not fair. And on top of that, I don't even want to share. The only person I would share with would be my daughter slash best friend, Avery. Okay, because it's basically like you're just sharing with yourself, except an older version of yourself. Because guess what? She looks older than me. I look younger. She looks older. I I look younger she looks older okay you know what we maybe we wouldn't share a room but we might as well have shared a womb because we're like twins except of course you know fraternal fraternal because i'm like the young one she's the old one <laughs> <laughs> damn i'm gonna need to start doing vocal warm-ups before this so i can get <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me let me show you what I do to warm up my voice. This is it, this is it, this is life, the one you got, so let's just have a ball. This is it, this is it. Bueller Sorry, is just looking at me like, shut the fuck up over there. <laughs> Commercials. Here comes one right now. So, um, Jorinda's like, okay, guys, I came up with a solution. Are you ready for it? Because, okay, here's the solution. I don't like to share a room. And the one's like, me neither. Okay, guys, <laughs> great job. <laughs> Dorinda, <laughs> nice solution, Dorinda. Well, I'm not sure. I don't like shit. to share a room unless it's with a pirate. Oh, sorry. Uh, more details on that later tonight at 8 p.m. Be there or be square. 
who's gonna have the salmon so um durand is like okay then so here's what we can do we know who doesn't want to share a room so who who wants to room together whoever wants to room together can take the master okay i'll move out of mine and you guys can figure it out does that help i think that's fair and that's all you're gonna hear about it from me okay and it's actually a surprisingly effective thing because obviously Sonia and Ramona are going to like room together and uh, there's like literally no fights. Well, so every trip because up. they always, they even showed the extended clip package of those two always saying, you know what? We get the best room because we're going to room together. So we get the biggest room. And then they always end up getting the best room because they agree to be roommates. So it worked out in the classic style. You know what? I'm just being a team player here, okay? That's all. I'm actually being very helpful. So now um, now Sonia and Ramona are just like in their room and, and Ramona's like, what's that thing that's between your chest? She goes, oh, this thing. This is just some things so that way I don't get chest wrinkles. Oh, and this. This is just egg from breakfast. Oh, and this. <laughs> oh, that's just uh, Martine's sperm. We did it. <laughs> So Martin takes Lou to her room and she's like, oh, quarto, quarto, room, 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 egg, egg. Is this a kitchen cocina? Very American. Very, very American. And she's like, you know, at first I was like the bungalow. I want the main house. But then I said, this might be more. <laughs> a little bit more private. You know, I wouldn't mind having a, my own servant, maybe a hot, sexy man like. Mr. Belvedere, hit it, boys. Three, two, one. Shrieks on the china. Never matter before. Who cared? Oh, when you walk through the... I'm sorry. That's as far as I can get in the song. <laughs> that's all I know in French. Please carry on. <laughs> so Dorinda is in her room, and it's got some like weird modern doors on everything, like closets, and it's got all this shit <laughs> in there. It's awful. And they're like curved, like the door curves out, but then it curves in on one part, and presumably they're curved like handles would be to <laughs> open like and a close. Weird them. spaceship. It's awful. It's awful. Uh, it's like she can't. And she's just trying to find the toilet. She's trying to both find the toilet and the way out of the room. <laughs> like every Dorinda, door looks the same. It's Dorinda, and this, the room goes all the way around because she can walk around the bed. The bed's in the middle of the room, so it's just Dorinda walking in a circle, trying to pull every single door. Going, is this the door? Wait a minute, is this the bathroom? Please, it's not the bathroom. Who's the closet? Another closet. What is in here? Oh, get, okay, that's not that's not the bathroom. Where's the bathroom in here? Okay, it's like, wait, I'm gonna go ask him. I can't find where. How do I get out? How do I get out of here? <laughs> well, all right. This that's is... actually Mr. Belvedere. That's crazy. What are you doing in here? Get out of here. I'm looking for the bathroom. <laughs> hey, and there's Wesley. And there's Bob Yuka. What's going on? Mm -hmm. um, the, this is literally like as close as we're going to get to watching Dorinda in a mirror maze. If you ever said like, what would happen if you put Dorinda in a fun house and got her trapped in a, in, a, in a maze of mirrors? This is it. Where do I go? Hey, who's that lady over there? Hey, who's that lady over there? Hey, you stole my look. Hey, are you pointing at me? Stop pointing at me. She's just yelling at her own reflections. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Ramona is unpacking with Martine, and she's like, see, you know what? This is how I do it. It's all in hangers, okay? And look, this this closet needs to be taller. Why is this thing down so much? Like, who's going to be able to unpack their things with a closet that short? And he goes, oh, okay. I will tell the architect of the house to make it taller for you. Okay. I was like, yes, <laughs> bitchy-ass Martine, I love you. She's like, thank you so much, okay? Like, now could you move my luggage, si vous play? <laughs> She doesn't so, even skip a beat. She's like, okay, that would be great. You know? Thank you. Call thank it. you for finally finally some good service. Where are the pool noodles? So uh, finally Dorinda finds her door and gets out. She goes, this room doesn't even make any sense. It's like somewhere between the Guggenheim Museum, Mars, and a panic room. So um, <laughs> so she finally gets out. She And Martine shows her where the toilet is. The toilet is behind a the only door that does not look like all the other doors, but it looks it's, like a wall, like so a wall. I totally understand. Why would you I totally put understand a why bathroom the behind a hidden, like a hidden door? Who does that? <laughs> it's so strange. She goes, praise the Lord. So now they're all in their bathing suits. They're getting into their bathing suits, and Ramona's at the table, and she's like arranging the seating, and she's like, you know what? I like to sit in the middle 
because that way I can look at everybody. And if it means that I'm in every single shot on the show, well, then so be it. It wasn't designed that way. I just want to look at everyone's faces, including Wanda over there. <laughs> Kristen. Whatever. <laughs> and Kristen's like, oh, my God, you brought us gifts. That's so nice. I brought a, I brought us gifts too, Ramona. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Guys, I didn't, I've never felt this energy from Ramona before. Like, she's so calm and collected. I'm, like, literally waiting for the other shoe to drop. Ow, Ramona. What? You know what? You said you wanted a shoe to drop. That You didn't say it couldn't be on your head. That's it. You know what? This reminds me of this one time when I was a little girl and I'd always like walk into the room and my father's best friend, Geraldine Parsons Smith, would just throw shoes at my head. And she said, you know what? If you don't want to get hit by shoes, have a smaller head. And to this day, I can't wear hats because I'm too paranoid that my the hats will accentuate how big my head is and a shoe will come flying at my forehead. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that's just my story. Mm -hmm. So then um, Kelly comes in and um, everyone's like, oh, my God, you look so beautiful. Ramona's like, well, you look boobalicious. She's like, no, you look boobalicious. She goes, you know what? Maybe I'm going to go the other way now because Kelly's got such nice boobs. Look at me. I'm so modern. I'm accepting of gay people and people of different colors, which I don't even see. Okay. So Ramona's like, you no, know, I just know that when, like, when, when Kelly was on The Housewives, she was at her best, okay? She was not at her best, okay? So I'm looking forward to seeing her because, you know, for, for the past few years, she's always been, like, having it together. And so I'm, like, hoping she'll keep it together on this trip. So that way, I can tear her down and destroy her mental state, okay? You know what? I'm really glad she seems to be doing okay because she's possibly going to be my first possibly black girlfriend. So... <laughs> <laughs> is she black i don't even know because i don't even see color anymore okay i've learned I, I so much color at all whoa <laughs> so then um she's like okay i'm hungry you know what can i yell because i'm like seriously really hungry okay i'm hungry ding a ding a ding ding me to eat the fuck my God, this woman Come is on, the girls. fucking worst. Oh, you know what? Where are they? It's not right. I haven't eaten in 24 hours, okay? Come on. Come on. What's, what's going on? Dorinda. Okay, we're all starving, and we don't want to eat without you, and it's 4 o'clock, and I haven't eaten in about three weeks, okay? I'm very hungry. I was I was trapped in a closet, and I was it was I was abducted by a person, and they didn't feed me the entire time, so now it's my, finally my time to eat, and you're preventing me from eating my food, Okay. And so now she's yelling up the stairs. Hey, girls, come down, girls. I haven't eaten in, what is it, 14 hours now? Whoa. And Kristen's like, oh, there's a Ramona we know and love. And so uh, one of the work, there's like people, the chefs or whoever, like the staff is in the back. Manu. What, does he say I love her? What did he say? No, he says, he goes, ugh, she's nonstop that one. And then the lady goes, <laughs> yeah, she's the boss. She's the boss. So Ramona's like, you know what? She's like, oh my God, I just did the calculations. I haven't eaten in 14 hours. Like, no wonder why I'm starving. 14 hours. And so she's so yelling up. And so Dorinda comes down. She goes, who is screaming? She's like, I'm starving, Dorinda. But you know what? Do not scream at me. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Ramona. I'm back. Okay. You fall into it. Like, you fall into it. Like, she's changed. And then, boom. Fun Dorinda. I'm just having a good time. <laughs> this isn't making me cry. I'm just kidding. I'm just being fun Dorinda. <laughs> you know what? I don't do well with people screaming at me, okay? I'm not a dog, okay? And Sonia's like, well, we're only here five minutes and there's a disturbance of the peace and the backlash is Dorinda. <laughs> so... <laughs> just you know serve the I food, don't... please, okay? <laughs> so Dorinda comes to the table, and then Dorinda cannot, you know, Dorinda's getting herself worked up because Ramona's like, whatever. Now we're, I yelled, and now we're going to eat, okay? She's like, you know what, Ramona? Don't yell at me, Ramona, okay? Because it, it hurts my feelings. And now here's one of several hurt I animal apologize. references I'm going to make in this episode to I justify apologize. my behavior. If you pull my tail, I'm going to bite because you pull my tail. I apologize. I'm sorry. I apologize. Don't pull my I tail. Apologize. All right. I apologize. Don't don't I'm don't flick me in the giant gerbil balls, the hamster balls. I am I'm going to start rolling around in a see-through ball sorry. and bumping into the I walls. I apologize. I'm very sorry. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I'm you know sorry. what? Don't I'm sorry that I'm sorry. Don't okay. knock honey down off of the tree because I'm going to be a bear and I'm going to eat sorry. that honey and the music. I apologize. And it's going to be. You. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. 
Sorry, don't scare me. Don't scare a horse because I the horse is going to kick in your stupid fucking sorry. ugly face. I'm very sorry. Don't do it I'm to sorry. me, Ramona. I mean it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize, okay? <laughs> so Sonny's sorry, like, Sonny's oh, wow. Like, yeah. Wow. She's like, wow, we already just started the trip and she's already the, the apologizer. Yeah, there she is. So then they're still wondering where Lou is. And Sonny's like, oh, she's got her own private exit and entrance. Um, but, but, hey, they worked out last time. That's where she took the pirate. <laughs> yeah, well, where did you go when you hooked up with the pirate? She's like, oh, you know, we just went down to the garden. I don't, you know, I don't need to go down to a bungalow. It was easy. <laughs> now you have a choice. Rug rash or garden rash. <laughs> So then the food comes and Luann comes and she's like, well, I mean, the bags take up most of my room, but that's okay. I'm such a good natured person. And so Ramona is like, well, you know what? We got food. I'm going to go change my clothes. Ramona, who has just screamed at everybody to come to the table, immediately gets up the second food comes. <laughs> well, she's probably jealous because everyone's in their bathing suit and she didn't change into her bathing suit. She's like, you know what? I want to look sexy also, Kai. So Dorinda's like, so is everybody excited about being here? Because honestly, I was a little nervous coming. I'll be honest. But you're like, you know what it is? You kind of have to stop and enter this life now. Like, and I'm thrilled about it, you know? It's, you know, because it's been like a minute since I did the last trip. And I was the hostess who controlled it all. But now I'm the guest and I'm part of the group. And it's a different dynamic. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. You know what? So Nurse Dorinda and Nurse Luan, I didn't tell you. I have giving the third degree burn to my arm, okay? Because I can't go in the water, okay, everybody? I'm like, oh, yeah, Ramona, yeah, Ramona's burnt. Anybody gonna ask me why, okay? You know why? Because I was having a beautiful dinner party in my home in the Hamptons, like we all do, those of us with homes in the Hamptons. Most of you understand, not Barbara here. Sorry, Barbara. It's Kristen! <laughs> okay. And you oh, know what? I got terrified that Barbara was actually here. Sorry, continue. <laughs> That's actually a real threat, Ramona, all right? <laughs> I mean, listen, if they could ask Jennifer back, they could bring Build a Bar Builder Barbara back here. We know what. <laughs> you know, just as long as she knows. I'm the first person experimenting with sexuality on the show. That's it. <laughs> so, I was having a beautiful party for rich people. Rich people who enjoy rich people. And you know what? There were all these candles that were lit. And I went like this, and guess what? I put my hand out, and my sleeve was all ostrich feathers, okay? And not just any kind of ostrich feathers. Ostriches that are endangered and that were killed for my dress. And you know what? Those feathers caught on fire, and next thing I know, my wrist is on fire, and I have, like, ostrich burns. And Luann, in all sincerity, goes, oh, Your ostrich feathers caught on fire? God! It's <laughs> terrible. And Kristen's like, is that even a thing? Ostrich feathers? It's not. Don't make don't wear ostrich feathers, anybody. And Kristen's like, okay, so how do you guys feel about being back together? Well, you know what? Here's how I feel. I always feel like Sonya's far away. Like when we stop filming, Sonya just dumps us. She doesn't answer our calls. She doesn't answer our texts. You're problematic as fuck, okay? It like goes to show you, Sonya is like the only person in this group. Like Sonya acts like she's the one without any kind of boundaries in this group. But I think Sonya is actually like, mm, she's embarrassing based and off I'm Sonya. <laughs> Ramona, based off the text that you've sent page six, I'm, not, I'm sure Sonya's like, I don't think I wanna be having any of those in my text conversations. So Sonya's like, oh no, we're still best friends, you know? So it's like, well, you know what? I love you, Sonia. I love you. Yeah. And Kristen goes, I know it always starts with I love you. Ha! And everyone goes, you know what? I see her on the streets. And even my friends say, oh, I thought you were good friends. And then Sonia goes, hi, Ramona. I can't talk to you. I got to go right now. I don't want to be photographed with you because you're in the headlights again for saying something problematic. And then you just run off. And I thought you were my good friend. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Even even my friends say, isn't she a friend? <laughs> I just love Sonya being, oh, hi, Ramona. Bye, Ramona. Bye. Good to see you, Ramona. <laughs> hi, bye. Got a brand to protect. And Sonya's like, okay, uh, you're right. I suck. I'm the worst friend ever. And Dorinda's saying, oh, just text back. All we want is to hear from you, you know? And uh, Kristen's like, okay, well, did you guys... Um, 
what did she say? Like, did you guys think you would be filming again together or something? And Ramona was like, oh, it's the dream come yeah. true. You know what? Because I'm with Sonia. Even though, like, right now we're fighting with each other, it's still been great. <laughs> so I'm just like, what are you talking about? We're not fighting with each other. Well, Bye. You know, great Gotta thing. go. <laughs> you know, the great thing was that after I was put on pause, and then Chrissy goes, oh, here we go. And Dorinda goes, well, you got fired, okay? But I was on pause. Let's be clear. So after you got fired, I was put on pause. And I was put on pause, okay? Fired, pause, pause. And it begins. There are two people that were fired here, okay? You and Ramona. But hers was actually a flyer, okay? Because she had all she feathers. You were just employment fired. You know what I'm saying? I was paused. And Kristen's like, oh, okay. And Rona says, let's be positive. She goes, no, no, you were fine. I was put on pause. She goes, okay, well, let's be clear then because we're on the same show right now. So you can call it fired or you can call it paused. And Dorinda's like, oh, okay. <gasps> okay, okay. And Kelly goes, um, what is put on pause? What was that? What does that mean? Well, like someone puts you on pause. Like, how do you even do that? <laughs> what? I don't watch this show. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what anybody's talking about. Are, you, are we on TV right What's now? The What's the TV? It's crazy. Am I selling this house? Dorinda's like, well, I don't know, but that's what Andy Cohen said. And Kristen goes, okay, so you're still paused. And uh, Kristen's like, whoa, button pushed, button pushed. Whoa, crazy old lady over there. And Luann says, there are certain buttons you can't push with D. And the pause button is a button you must not push. Just how I've been told by many music producers, don't press the record button when she starts singing. I don't know what that means. You know though, what, like but... a lot of my audiences say, like the most I enjoy your music is when I don't press play. But you know what, we've all just I've got had... different buttons. So. I've had a lot of sound technicians say, I'm not going to touch the on button on your microphone tonight. And I... I think that's a compliment. I can't quite figure that one out. <laughs> so Ramona is like, you know what? That's not even a way to start. I mean, they don't, I don't even think they know each other. <laughs> the producer says, uh, they were on a season together. What? Of what? This show. What show? Real Housewives of New Wait York. Wait a second. What? You, you hired the concierge to be a cast member? No, that's, that's a cast. Kristen's on your trip with you. What? <laughs> Who's Kristen? <laughs> what? <laughs> so funny. And they're like, it was season seven roll on it. And she's like, seriously? <laughs> they overlapped? <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, wow. So I'm just like, you know, and I, I believe her. It's really, do you believe her? It's hard to, rem it's hard to remember who was on what season at the same time. But, um, cause I, well, you know, we recently, like, we Listen. did a vintage, we did a, like, a vintage recap uh this last on this last tour that we did and or recently and we definitely recapped something from um it was two years seven. ago we did we did scary oh no I we did a berkshire we did like the we did the original berkshires and i remember we were like oh my god i can't we forgot that Kristen actually went to the berkshires one year oh yeah yeah, I forgot again. Yeah. You see? So, I, I mean, I kind of buy it. So, Dorinda's like, um, well, all right. You know what? So, anyway, the point is, fired person not talking to you. Okay? Because people without jobs for this long don't get spoken to. Okay, but the rest of you. Um, I, I think this is me being paused. It gave me time to do other stuff. Like sit in front of my fireplace and say, wow, it's a fire. Yeah, I've started talking to my peacock, <laughs> the one that's stuffed. So that's been that's been yeah. really fun. You know what, one time I went up to my room and I started yelling at a pillow to stop eating cookies in the bedroom. And I said, I, I can't eat, I don't have a mouth. I said, you fucking lied. You better back it up a little bit. Say, it's been good, it's been badly for the most part for me. Yeah, I listen, I'm on my fourth watch through of Law & Order, it's great. So Sonia's like, um, she's like, Ramona goes, well, you know what? It's the best scenario. And Sonia's like, yeah, well, it's the best scenario, except you don't get 23 episodes in the mail. Check, 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 check. She goes, well, you know what? I don't even need money anymore. She goes, well, you have a lot of money. I need the money. Okay. <laughs> Speak for yourself, bitch. <laughs> and Lee's like, exactly. Trust me. She would not be here otherwise. And Ramona starts cackling. And so Sonia's like, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't come. So Luann says, okay. So everybody disperse. We're going to meet back here. Uh, we're going to go um, have dinner at seven, right? So Kelly is now with Sonia. 
just talking privately. And Kelly's like, well, by the way, Sonia, like, I'm like you, like, I just like, I don't really talk to people either, you know, because like, I have friends, I haven't seen my friends in a long time. And like, I don't come from a feelings family, you know, and I'm just afraid to talk to people because like, I don't want people to think I'm complaining. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't come from a feelings family, which is why I really don't care when I call someone or cook instead of a chef or say I'm up here, you're down here because I just don't have feelings. So then um, Sonia then says um, she just doesn't she doesn't like to dump her shit on her friends. And, you know, she they're both just saying how they just don't want to burden people with their own emotional stuff. And they, they're bonding over the fact that they're also like single parents. And, Kelly, you know, they're just saying how they just have to like their focus on getting their kids, you know, through school. And then, you know, they can focus on their friends later. Yeah. Hello there. This is a two part recap. OK, this is the end of part one. So thank you so much for listening to this. Uh, just come back a little later for part two. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch, it's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey.